or you have to manipulate on the level of the individual vote in order to uh, rig the election. Wholesale fraud means there is a way to manipulate the voting system or the system of transmission of the numbers or whatever <clears throat> so that um, you don't have to manipulate uh, every vote. You can just um, uh, let the people vote whatever they want and afterwards you can change it. The paper voting system we have with, the, with transparency in place, with the possibility to watch it, is relatively proof against wholesale fraud. And the only way to temper there is retail fraud. Of course you can go and the people who count the votes count them wrong and place individual votes on the wrong um, uh, stack of, of votes in front of them. But you need, and that's one of the properties of these two types of fraud, you need a lot of people for retail fraud. You need only, ideally, only one person for wholesale fraud. If there is a successful way to wholesale fraud an election, then it's done by one person because the less person, they, uh, the less person do it, the less uh, um, people you have that know about it and the less risk you have of being exposed. And, and that's the point, of course, e-voting opens or reopens the door that we closed with our voting procedures years ago reopens the door decades ago, opens the door for wholesale fraud. Of course you can rig an election on a systematic level once you have machines that are not transparent. And that has been shown. Okay, so in my opinion this loss of transparency and the loss of the possibility to witness and verify the vote by just going there is enough to just say, let's forget about e-voting for the moment. Probably we find something in 10 or 20 years that changes this. But at the moment, probably in 50 years, we are a different society and everybody, everybody speaks C-native or some, some language. And we can all verify stuff that's happening. We can watch code in execution, stuff like that. Um, then we can go back and look at that. But at the moment, I think we should just forget it. So for me, or probably I say it that way. We are a relatively old democracy. There are younger democracies than us. Austria, Europe in general, has democracies that are quite old compared to the rest of the world. There are older ones like our neighbor, neighboring Switzerland. But the point is that we have forgot why we learned to trust the election process. It is because the officials in regard to transparency have what in German there's unfortunately no useful um, translation of this term, have a, have a Bringschuld, a Bringschuld, in respect to transparency. It's their job to make the voting process transparent. It's not our, pros, uh, our job to find a way to look into the voting process or to have some way to verify the result afterwards. It's their job to make the voting process as transparent as possible so that there cannot be any manipulation. Um, there is the idea of the, the tower. Oh, oh my God. It, it, um, the, it, there was the idea that you build a prison like a tower and all the cells are perpendicular, no, uh, from, from the center. And you have an elevator in the middle that goes up and down. No, you have a, a person sitting in the middle behind a, a mirror. And it can look, uh, this person can look into every cell because it's round. And um, because of this uh, possibility to look into every cell, but the mirror through which the person looks so that the person sitting in the cell cannot see if he or she is being watched. The theory says that this is a very good prison because the people don't do anything because they could be watched. Of course, this is a very, uh, this is not a good prison. It, it rains on fear, it rains on the possibility of being observed all the time. But if we turn it around and say that's what we want from an election, we want an election that is so transparent that nobody has the idea to want to rig it, to want to manipulate it, because somebody could be watching and he could be exposed. Then this is, that's what I call an effective voting procedure. So for me, e-voting at the moment is a no-go. And just to explain in an epilogue why I think that it's such a big topic in the, um, not only in political circles where I can understand it, but also in security and um, uh, technological adept circles, 
is something that came to me yesterday. I think that e-voting is a technological temptation. When, when it's one of these problems where we all immediately switch to problem-solving mode when somebody describes it. You say, okay, we have the problem, we want to use machines in an election, but machines are easily tampered with, so what could we do? And all of us easily switch into a problem solving where we say, oh, okay, that's cryptography, and we can use double blind signatures, blah, blah, stuff like that. And um, forgetting that probably the question was wrong. So the technological problems of secrecy and security in e-voting are hard to solve and challenge, ev challenge every, respect and challenge every respect respectable nerd, including me. But my main concern is, did we ask the right question? Is the problem setting right? Do we solve the right problem? Or do we have to reframe the problem? And I think that is the core question. How could we TNO, how could we trust no one, the voting process? And I think that there is place for technology in doing that. We can find ways of introducing te uh, technology into the voting process in order to make it trust no one proof. But e-voting in the way it is done now is not the way. So it's just a technical temptation, but it's a very dangerous one. And with this, I thank you for your attention and I hope um, you don't kill me now. Oh, very good talk, thank you. Um, if you just could put your pros and cons slide, then I could share with you the experience we had in France for the last president oh. voting, because we yeah. had uh, some town using voting machines. And so basically, if we take all the pros, so uh, the one that is next to the place I, um, I live, um, they didn't have a higher voter participation because uh, the process was so screwed that people were giving up. They were queuing for hours and at some point were giving up. So it was not cheaper, obviously. Um, the result didn't come faster because of the process. So uh, they, um, they were supposed to close at 8 p.m. and in fact the last voter came at 9.15. So they took more than one hour late on the schedule. Uh, no error counts, uh, too bad for them, so basically people vote on the machine and then sign a registry. And they had on one third of their um, offices, they had errors between the machine count and the registry count, which is actually bad. Um, simpler access. Um, they were not adapted for disabled people, so a lot of disabled people, especially blind people, couldn't vote. Just simple as this. Um, so, so bad for the accessibility. The, the other problem is in France, when you want to vote, you can have multiple booths to actually cast your vote, one every 1,000 voter, but only one urn to uh, take the votes. And uh, a voting machine is an urn, so you only have one per, uh, per place. So that, that means that everybody has to queue and vote one by one. And every time you have a problem, then you're delaying the whole queue behind you. So, so what do you say? It doesn't scale? No, it doesn't scale at all. You, you can have, it's very easy to make a polling station larger for more people. Definitely. But, um, every time someone doesn't, do, can't cope with the, um, with the voting machine, it's delaying, it's delaying the, the whole process. So no more invalid votes. The problem is some people couldn't vote. So they've been assisted by someone which is prohibited by the process. But actually, uh, people could observe assisted votes. So the, the, simply the vote should have been invalidated at that place. And uh, but the new possibilities were just banned from the French legislation point of view. So if you take all the pros here, they were just all invalidated in that simple uh, election process. 
And that's the experience we have. And on top of that, we have other things like no certification for the machines. We have a um, machine with license where they fail at some basic test where they uh, should success and everything like this. And it's very, very worrying in the end. Mm -hmm. so. That's great to hear. I mean, not, but um, <laughs> I think the point is that um, of, I would expect that from any technology used in any context from, from my prior life, whenever technology is introduced to some new area, you have exactly these problems. But the wishful thinking is that they can be cleaned up. They can be, the technology matures and in a couple of years it works beautifully because we can learn so much from our failures. I think that one thing you said here hadn't occurred to me yet that it doesn't scale the way normal voting does. That's one point that you can't clean up. It doesn't get better. And the other point is that the process won't be more transparent, even if we uh, mature the technology through several generations. Um, one thing that's very interesting you said, um, uh, the, there's a practice in Austria of letting very old people vote. There's a person from the, um, uh, uh, election office going to um, r r retirees homes and helping people to vote there. And as from, from the experience that told by people who have witnessed this, this is a very dubious process because some of them can't read anymore. So you read to them the labels next to the circles where they make their cross. Of course, you can tell them whatever you want. Um, so you, you can anticipate what they vote and you have the, the, the vote made there. No, no, so it, it, that's, that's the one you want to vote and stuff like that. So that's another point where I think that um, technology in a way could help us let people cast their own vo uh, votes in the um, spectrum of possibilities. Okay, paper ballots are quite unusable for people that can't see. But of course I can build this very simple machine where you put in the paper ballot, you can feel the choices you have, you can press a button, and this machine can be so simple that it's transparent, that I can check it, that I can see if I press this button, then the right cross is made and stuff like that. Without any electronics. Yeah, but the, the, the whole that is... Uh, For me, there's another question. It's like... Voting is a right for everyone, but at the same time, it's a duty. I mean, for the democracy to work, we have to vote. And thus, the authority has to make it so we can vote in yes, proper condition. Yeah. I mean, if a netherly woman or man wants to vote, the authorities ask to give them the possibility to do mm -hmm. so. And it's the same for blind people, it's the same for disabled yeah, people, yeah. for everybody. So um, if the accessibility is not there, then the state is not fulfilling its duty to make people vote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then do it properly is even another question mm -hmm. behind this. So what you're saying is more or less that there's a monopoly and with e-voting it gets abused. Um, what I... What? Because there's only one provider for, for voting, and that's the state. And by doing what the state wants with voting, with the voting procedure, he abuses the... Yeah, but the state is, um, comes out of the voting of people. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so probably there's the wishful thing. No, sorry. No, that's, that's not right. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and uh, the plan there is to have some sort of paper trail coming from the voting machine so people can uh, check up on their electronically registered vote. Um, I was wondering, what are your ideas on that uh, point? Okay, um, that's one thing that I actually thought that somebody would ask. So that's for me, th th you remember this, this picture with all the things written in about the voting process. So you have the process that is transparent. And what a paper trail does is it takes um, it takes the process that is not uh, auditable, that is not transparent, and creates a parallel second process that you can audit. And the question for me now is, why should I want to do that? Why should I want, I want to make a, an intransparent process and then create a second process that I can verify the first process when my goal in reality is that I want to have 
state deliver on that Bringschuld that they have to make the process transparent in a way so that it can be checked at every step, not afterwards, but during the process. And this is not what happens here. This places, oops, this is like outsourcing, okay? You outsource the, the security and the integrity of the election to the people. You say, okay, let's see if you, if you catch us. That's, that's, that's what happens here. There are other 